Welcome to part two of Dear Angry, hosted by me, the Angry Blue Sock. This one comes from Almighty Smiley. I got a letter from my main cum stain? God motherfucking Smiley? Nice! How you been, my brother? <laughs> Just playing. Let me get back to the question. Dear Angry, there's this one gal at my school who I made the dire mistake of humiliating. While she and her friends have long since gotten over it and have supposedly forgiven me, I can't bring myself to let myself live it down. Before you berate me on being such a fucking prick in the first place, uh, how am I to go about this? Now, I want to answer this with asking you a question that only you know the answer to. Was the humiliation provoked, or at least a little bit deserved? Or did you do it just to make yourself feel better by sopping somebody else down? Either way, most sins are forgivable. Sure as hell this one is. As long as the apology, remorse, and regret is sincere. Based on the tone of this letter, I believe you truly feel like shit about this. It seems like everyone really has forgiven you, but, well, you, actually. Learn from this experience. If I was in your position, I would look the girl straight in the eye and man the fuck up. Apologize. Admit you were wrong. I mean, that's all. You'll feel the weight lift on your shoulders. I'm telling you this from experience. Eye contact is key. Now, Isolated bad actions don't make you a bad person. I respect you for admitting that you fucked up. Now clean it up, biatch. Now, I have a story of humiliation that most likely dwarfs anything you could possibly imagine. Before I go further, please realize, I honestly consider myself to be one of the nicest guys you could ever meet. Until you truly fuck with me. Then it's all like Voltron! And you have no one to blame but your damn self. Here's the setting that instigated this legendary mindfuck. I was in middle school at the time, hanging out with my two best friends in the world. One of them still is. The other one, scarred for life because of my sweet vengeance. On my way home from a comic book store in a less than safe area, the three of us were confronted by at least a dozen local gang members. Bitches. This was the first time I learned the hard way. Hoodlums are a lot like whores. In both cases, pussies run fucking deep. If you can't settle your shit one on one, you're nothing but a punk ass bitch motherfucker who deserves his ass kicked. But I digress. Back to the story. As me and my, as me and my true ally take a few punches, bleed a bit, lose a tooth or two. This backstabbing fuck runs as fast as he could. Jumps on the first bust and pretty much loses for dead. His boys could have literally killed us. He wasn't sticking around to find out. When I confronted him about it, he said he was being smart. And I would have done the same thing if I had the chance. Now, that was the wrong answer, motherfucker. If you would have just manned up and apologized, I would have been pissed for a while, but I would have let it go. <laughs> Not this time. I just smiled and stared at him dead in the fucking eye till he blinked first and walked away. I got the justification I needed to take it to a level few people have a dark enough side in their soul to even imagine. What did I do exactly? <laughs> You'll find out. The very next day, in the cafeteria of the middle school that we attend, I waited for this business to leave his book bag unattended. Unfortunately for him, he had his fair share of enemies, being a bitch that he was, so he was distracted for the next several minutes. I took the book bag from the table he was sitting on, and when his back was turned, unzipped it, dumped all the stuff in the garbage can with the least amount of traction that I could find, 
and discreetly instructed everyone I could find to dump their trays into the now infamous receptacle of revenge. Many people took it a step further and dumped their unfinished drinks out onto it, spit into it. <laughs> Once the can was filled to capacity, I tapped the stool's nozzle on the back and asked him politely, wherever might your book bag be? With my most innocent looking face possible. Mm hmm? Where's the book bag, faggot? He panics and looks around with no luck. I calmly suggest that someone might have thrown his book bag in the trash by accident. <laughs> Hilarity ensues as he overturns can after can, eventually finding his belongings. Once he does, me and several well-placed friends start chanting loser. I shit you not, the entire room seems to join in the chant, and every security guard in the school escorts him out of the cafeteria. He, um, had it coming, pretty much. Now, this could have easily been a scene in the Stephen King classic Carrie. If you didn't read the book or see the movie, put it on, to your, on your to do list. Um, just imagine, if you've ever been to a professional wrestling show, the way Madison Square Garden sounds when the fans are chanting, USA! USA! In a cafeteria. But, it went, loser! 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 <laughs> Be snitch. Anyway, the story has a prologue. I saw about 15 years later, on the streets, he demanded an apology. He felt I had ruined his childhood. To make one last ditch effort to be the better person, I told him that we have both done a lot of growing up since then, and that we were both wrong at the time, but that I did fuck up and I felt badly about it. He kept whining at me, and pissing, and moaning, and sobbing. So I told him the truth, that I still felt no remorse, and I fucking laughed in his face, and that I spit in it. Because, even though I overreacted at the time, he had that shit coming to him. Sucks to be you, fucker! Now, to this day, he crosses the street whenever I'm in his field of vision, as do his parents. In hindsight, my parents could have easily been sued for this. Lucky this didn't happen in the Sue Happy New Millennium, uh, ah, fuck it. Actually, come to think of it, I got another kind of funny story. I used to be a member of Bally's, you know, the health club. And the cunt that was his mother, still is his mother, still will always be a cunt and his mother for that matter, was going upstairs from the locker room to the weed area when I was going downstairs from the weed area to the locker room. We cross paths. She flips out actually panics and falls down the stairs. <laughs> Didn't hurt herself, unfortunately. But, um, she's a fucking whack job. Anyway, um, thanks for checking out this video. I'll be back with the third and final part of today's segment of Dear Angry. Please, leave honest feedback about how you think it went. And keep the letters coming. Love yous, and happy Ha <laughs> ha! Mm -hmm.